This call is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah, praise your name, O oh Lord. We thank you. We Let us go now to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you. The Heavenly Father, that, that you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, that you're God that sits up on high and still looks down low. We thank you for just being God and being God all by yourself. We thank you for who you are, you, your, your love, your, your, your holiness, your, your, your mercy, your grace. Your, you're just a wonderful, uh, awesome just glorious God and and we just say hallelujah thank you for being God and Lord we thank you that that you showed your love for us by giving us your only begotten son Jesus the Christ and we thank you for his death his burial and his resurrection we thank you the heavenly father for uh, the blessing that that you didn't leave us hopeless or helpless by ourselves when you took Jesus and set him at the right hand of you at your throne, Lord, but you sent your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in us. And we thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, how he leads, guides, and convicts us. We thank you as he rests, his presence is here abiding with us. And then, Lord, we just thank you this day that you're true to your word, where two or three are gathered in your name, you said you would be in the midst. So, Lord, whatever we stand in the need of as we praying right now, when everybody on the line ever stand in the need of, Lord, we just ask you, the Lord, to meet our needs. And not only meet our needs, Lord, but you, you promised us abundant life. So meet us abundantly, Lord, in everything that we do for you and, and for your world and for your people, Lord. Bless as only you can. And, Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. Bless this technology right now, Facebook and conference call. Bless the, 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 the guiding light ministry and every ministry that, touch, that is touched by this ministry, Lord. Just have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, our lesson for this morning comes from a very familiar passage of scripture over in John chapter 10 john chapter 10 um it starts at verse 1 and goes all the way down to verse 15 and i have a reader for me today i'm gonna see how this translates on facebook but i'm gonna let my reader read for me and um so just just uh, read uh, whatever uh version of the bible you have uh, uh, uh possible trees uh read uh Chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. Okay, John chapter 10, verses 1 through 15 states, I will tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate in the shepherd of a sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listened to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Yes, yes. But, but they will never follow a stranger. Mm -hmm. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what the, he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Yes. I am the gate. Yes. For the sheep. All who ever came before me 
were thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Verse 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Have mercy. I have come <laughs> that they may have life and have it to the full. Yes, yes, yes. Keep reading. I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Yes. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. Mm -hmm. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock, excuse me, attacks the flock and scatters. Mm -hmm. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Mercy, mercy. I am the good, good shepherd. shepherd. Yes. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Mm -hmm. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Apostle Patrice. And uh, we, we just wanted to try that this morning. I don't know how it translated on the on the uh, Internet with the Facebook, but uh, uh, the Lord had just led uh, Apostle Patrice to read. And, and I just went went with um, how the spirit was leading on that scripture. Um, this this passage of scripture. Um, we we have several titles we could place upon it. Um, the protecting love. Uh, I'm I'm dealing with God's uh, uh, preserving love, or we could just deal with our good shepherd's love. It, it just has so many different titles you can place on this. Uh, but the outline that we're going to look at today, we're going to deal with the gatekeeper and the good shepherd, just to have some G's. <laughs> the gatekeeper and the good shepherd. Um, our key verses, verses uh, 14 and 15 of uh, John chapter 10, where he says there, I am the good shepherd and, and, and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. As the father knoweth me, even so know I the, the, the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Um, this, this is, this is that passage where he, he says in several occasions, I, I, am the good shepherd he says it three times in in this passage of scripture that he is the good shepherd and he pulls out this thing he says and i know them i know them and 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 that word that word know in the in the greek is 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 uh uh genoski or genosko um that means to know that that that's a word of intimacy that's a word of ownership that that he says i i i, I know them and they know me it, it's intimate to know somebody uh to love somebody to to have a relationship with somebody you know one of the things we we often tell this you know many people say well you know i i I know this person or I know that person, but in actuality, we know of those people. We ain't like we really know them. You know, we can say, I know Michael Jordan. You don't really know Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan don't really know you, but you know of him. But when, when Jesus used this word, I know, he says, I, I am the good shepherd and my sheep know me. They know who I am, and I know who they are. That we are known, we are together, and that's and that right there is what's important about this relationship that that we have. We've been dealing with with a relationship with with, with Jesus. We've been dealing with moving from a, a religion to a relationship. We've been dealing with this love that 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 Jesus has for us. It's, it's so important. And so this passage of scripture in John chapter John chapter uh, 10 is, is dealing with Jesus being the good shepherd and we being his sheep and we know him and he knows us. Jesus says he is the good shepherd. And he's a good shepherd of his sheep. He knows every one of us. We all belong to him and and, and, and we know him and he knows us. And 
Jesus died for all of us because he loves and he cares for us. Just like a good shepherd ought to do for his sheep. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus loves us and cares for us is, 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 the, is the main uh, uh, concept that we want to get. And then for the kids today, we just want to want to deal with it from this standpoint. Jesus is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. Two, the shepherd hears and follows the shepherd's The sheep hear and follow the shepherd's voice. Number three, Jesus gave his life for his sheep. And number four, all who follow Jesus will be loved and protected and saved. Oh, hallelujah. So now when we get down deep into the lesson for those, you know, deep folks, we're going to identify the good shepherd and the sheep. I, I know I'm going to talk about the thieves and the, and the wolves and, and the hirelings also and, and deal with this metaphor of Jesus saying he is the gate and, and the door. And then we're going to deal with it from the standpoint to, to that, that when we get through with this lesson, we're going to be purposeful in listening uh, to the true shepherd and following him. Amen. That's that's what we want to walk away with this daily application. So let's let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. Verses the first verse, the first part of the text, we're gonna deal with this gatekeeper. And um uh, uh, this 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 is an interesting thing. Uh, uh, he says, Verily, verily I say unto thee, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And so just, just like Jesus is speaking, how did Jesus get to this text? How did he get to start de dealing with this parable, if you will? Well, the background of this is, is chapter 9. Chapter 9 is where in chapter 9 of the Gospel of John, there's a man born blind, and Jesus sees him and his disciples, and they ask him a question, well, why is this man born blind? And uh, did he sin, or did his mother or his parents sin? And Jesus says, neither. He, he's blind that God might be glorified. And so, he, and, and, and Jesus healed this man of blindness. And when he got healed of blindness, he went to the temple, and he showed everybody that he was blind. He was praising God, and they questioned him, who, 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 who said, who gave you sight? And he says, this one named Jesus, and he, he gave me sight. And it was like, oh, no, 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 no. This, this Jesus, this Jesus is something wrong with him. That's what the Pharisees said. That's what the religious leaders of that time said, even though scripture has said that when the Messiah comes, he's going to be able to heal folks and, and return the sight to the blind. But, but the religious leaders didn't want that. They, 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 they didn't want to trust, trust Jesus. And so Jesus begins to tell this parable. He says unto them, uh, uh, he, he that, that, that enters not by the door into the sheep over clams up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Jesus is painting a picture here in this parable that, that, that the Pharisees, who are now the, the keeper of God's elect, God's special children of Israel, the chosen ones, are really acting like thieves and robbers because they didn't come into their power and into their position by the proper method, which is coming through Jesus, coming through God. They have climbed over the wall and now they're controlling and having their way with the sheep. And he says they are thieves and robbers. Oh, hallelujah. We, we need to catch this. Jesus is trying to say something here, that, 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 that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can come to the Father except through him. And that means that any time that, that, that people try to, to, to take care of God's sheep, but they don't want to come under God's authority and God's rule and God's way, they, they are thieves and robbers. But he says, but he that entered by the door 
is the shepherd of the sheep. Now, now let's paint this door here so we can really understand this whole concept. Um, the 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 uh, um, um, shepherds would gather all of their sheep either in a cave or they would put them in some kind of fold, if you will, where they would surround them on all sides with something like some wire, not wire, but bushes or something like that, or, or a mountain or a cave, so that they'll be protected through the night, that they won't stray or, or go away. And then the shepherd would, would have an entrance that he would lay his body across, and when he laid his body across this entrance, no sheep could come in or come out unless they went past him. No other shepherds could come in or come out unless they went past him. And if they didn't come that way, they were climbing over the wall, which meant that they were like thieves and robbers. And so he says, but he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the portal opens and the shepherd hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. Many times there were multiple shepherds in this fold watching over the sheep overnight. And so the shepherds would come out one by one and they would have a little call for their sheep. I don't know what kind of, you know, uh, uh, call they had, but the shep the sheep knew their shepherd's call. Oh, I, I, we need to hear that. They had a relationship with him and they knew his voice. Oh, let, let me say that one more time. The sheep and the shepherd had a relationship and they knew each other's voice. That, 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 that's, that's, that's because they didn't spend time together. They, they have an intimate relationship with one another. They have talked with one another. They have ate with one another. They have sat with one another. They have been asleep with one. They have a relationship that, that's, that, that, that they knew their shepherd. And so, so here it was when they get ready to come out of the fold Shepherds would go, one shepherd would go to the east, another shepherd would go to the west, another would go to the north or the south or whatever. And then they would call their sheep, bah, 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 whatever they said, bah, 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 bah. And the sheep would come out and they would automatically go where their shepherd was. So Jesus is painting this parable and he's saying something to the Pharisees. The reason people aren't following you, the reason you, you got to be so hardcore on folks and have all these rules and regulations and beating these folks down and trying to use instead of having a, a, a what they call a shepherd to sheep kind of mentality where the shepherd goes and the sheep follows, y'all walking around having a shepherd dog mentality where you got to send out the dogs to, to tell the sheep which way to go and how to go. And we have to be careful about that. Jesus is saying to them, look, I'm the good shepherd. He's coming back to it. But y'all are like thieves and robbers. And he says in verse 4, he'll put forth his own sheep and he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. And a stranger, verse 5, they will not follow but will flee from him because for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable, Jesus said unto them, but they understood not what the things they were which he spoke unto them. Those who heard Jesus used this illustration was having a hard time understanding. So he went and explained it more. Listen to the explanation, King James Version, New King James, or King James. And they, and he said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door, or I am the gatekeeper. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, I am the gatekeeper, but but by me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastors. The thieves come not, 
but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I come that they might have life and that they might have life more abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. That those, those verses there, I am the, 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 the door, I am the gatekeeper. Jesus claims, like, look, I'm going to make this thing real plain to y'all. I am the doorkeeper. I am the gatekeeper. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Salvation comes by nobody but me. Anybody else that comes any other kind of way is a thief and a robber. And the sheep don't want to hear that mess. They won't listen to it. Hallelujah. And that's the beauty of it. Believers, when we trust and depend on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we know we came into the fold the right way by believing that he died on the cross for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. No, no other way. It's, it's, it's Jesus and Jesus alone. But he says, the thief cometh to, but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came to give you life and give you life more abundantly. The thieves' motives are thy mind of opposite of the shepherds he's he's interested in his own selfish needs he the the, the 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 thief he's he steals the sheep in order to kill them and and feed himself thus destroying part of the flock jesus is saying to the pharisees that's how you guys are you religious authorities, that's how you guys are. All you doing is is, is taking the sheep so that you can uh, 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 live off of them. But in contrast, Christ is saying, look, I come to give you life. He's a life giver. He's a life sustainer. He's interested in the welfare of the sheep. And he's enabled the sheep to have full and secure lives. The thief takes lives. But Christ gives life. And so he goes on now. After he's painted this picture of the difference between the thieves and the robbers and the Pharisees and the good shepherds. He, he, he breaks this thing down and he says, let's go talk about being the good shepherd. And that's my last point, verses 11 through 15. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. This, 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 he doesn't say, I am the shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. So when I see that, I, I hear, I hear David saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's what a good shepherd does. And this good shepherd says, I have laid down my life. I, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for my sheep. Jesus already has proved that to us. We can look at the cross in 2020 hindsight and we can see that Jesus gave his life for us. Scriptures that we talked about on last week. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful message. What That's just good news. He is the good shepherd. And he gathers his sheep 
and he feeds him and he protects him. He has a strong bond, a relationship with his sheep. He protects us against all of the wilds that could possibly come at us. Wild beasts, lions, jackals, and wolves, and bears. All of that stuff that are coming. Jesus is there. And we could even say like David did, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they come. David gave us a wonderful example of what a good shepherd really does. We know when we read about David as he was getting ready to fight the big giant Goliath, he let us know, look, I'm already, as a, as a good shepherd, I've learned how to fight bears. I've learned how to fight lions off and keep them away from the sheep. And then he says to Goliath, you uncircumcised Philistine, I know I can defeat you because I got God on my side. A good shepherd knows that he can win the battle. Oh, hallelujah. But he says something in verse 12. He says, but he that is a hireling, not the shepherd who owns the sheep. Not seeing the wolves coming. Leaveth the sheep and flee that the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. Hirelings. Hirelings. People who are just watching over the sheep because it's good money. Hired hands. He says, they don't own the sheep. They don't care for the sheep. They just there because they're good servants. And they ain't really even good servants because they ain't watching and praying. Who's watching and praying over you? Is it a good shepherd or is it a hired hand? Verse 13 says, the hireling flees because he's a hireling. He doesn't care for the sheep. And Jesus comes back in 14 and says, but I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known of mine. Oh, hallelujah. We got to watch these hirelings because when the wolves come, they don't stay to protect us. They don't stay to protect the sheep and the sheep get scattered. So many people today are dealing with church hurt. They've been hurting the church because wolves and thieves and robbers have came in but the sheep wasn't being protected by a good earthly shepherd the Lord being our ultimate good shepherd protects us and keeps us but he gives that responsibility to other shepherds under shepherds to watch over the sheep who will deal with the members of the church will suffer with them will go through the hard times the the mean times will protect them with with prayer and with fasting because that's what a good shepherd does but Jesus says no matter about those hirelings or anybody else, I'm still the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and my sheep are known of me. I lay down my life for them. That's what the good shepherd does. Back in the day, as I get ready to conclude this lesson, 
that was a song that many people, I don't know if they still do it. I hadn't been to a wedding in a while. But they used to sing this song. It was written by Lionel Richie and I think him and uh, Diana Roth sung it. And it says, my love, there's only you in my life. The only thing that's bright. My first love, your every breath that I take, your every step I make. And I, I want to share all of my love with you. No one else will do. And your eyes, your eyes, your eyes, tell they tell me how much you care. Oh, yes. You always be my endless love. Two hearts, two hearts that beat as one. Our lives have begun. Forever I hold you close in my arms. I can't resist your charm. Oh, and love, oh love, I'll be a fool, for I am sure. You know I don't mind, I don't mind, you know I don't mind, cause you mean the world to me. I know, I know, I found, I found in you my endless love. Jesus wants us to have that kind of love for him because he has that kind of love for us. An endless love. A love that'll protect us, a love that'll keep us, a love that'll preserve us. A love that is an endless, 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 endless love. Hallelujah. You, you want that kind of love. I encourage you to give your life to Jesus. In this lesson, in this lesson, we... We want to have you understand that Jesus is the true shepherd. And he wants us to follow him. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Let us pray. The prayer of salvation. Dear Heavenly Father, we come right now. Confessing that we believe with our heart and our minds and our spirit that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins and come into our heart. Be our good shepherd. That we might have an endless love relationship with you from this day forward. Thank you, Lord. For dying. Thank you, Lord, for saving our soul. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us of our sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer this morning, I believe you are truly saved. And now you can have life and life more abundantly in Christ Jesus. Facebook, you be blessed. We're going to go on our conference call and have a discussion here. So if you want to join us in the conference call, the number is 910-218-0531. Again, 910-218-0531.